We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is, is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy show. My name is Sasani. And I'm Danielle. And we're back in the studio. We don't have planes and helicopters and scaffolds and screaming. Well, we don't have the beautiful blue ocean this is true. as an amazing backdrop behind us, but that's okay. I think we could do without that since we don't have the scaffolding and the noise and the <laughs> men working on the building and drilling and all of that. So all of that. I'm glad to be back in the building, aren't you? I'm, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> and it's Monday morning, and so we're going to start this week off strong, guys. We're glad that you're with us. Um, listen, we just want you to like, share, and subscribe. We say it every week, but we mean it. We want you to begin to share this information with other people who are in desperate need of an answer, of a solution, of something to get them through their day, to get them through their relationship, to take things to the next level. Absolutely, so absolutely. And if you're new, make sure you hit that notification bell too. It's really important because you will not miss a show. And every time we go live, you'll be notified to get on the show and join us. We want you to come on and let us know where you're from. Say, hey, my name is, and I'm from so-and-so, so that we get an idea of how far this broadcast is reaching. We want to reach the world with the good news that, guess what, infidelity isn't the end of the world, which brings us to the topic today, which I think is really interesting, infidelity and affairs, facts, myths, and what works. Yeah. And here's the deal, guys. You know, when it comes to the internet coming on the scene, right, um, infidelity has kind of taken on this new idea. We have to redefine what it is all of a sudden, right? We think about back in the day day when Clinton said, I did not have sex with that woman. Sexual relations. I did not have sexual relationships with, or relations with that woman. Well, did you or didn't you? And I think that's where we get confused because we're like, well, what does it actually mean to be unfaithful and to have an affair in this day and age when mm -hmm. you have internet and you have all these other ways to connect on apps and things and we're now not just talking about getting together physically with bodies connecting actually some people like doing things on the internet is it any less an affair if you're not coming together physically well we're going to talk about that today we're going to get into what these particular myths are and we're going to bust up these myths with realities maybe some of you are holding on to some myths and things that you've heard some ideas you've accumulated along the way that you've got to give yourself permission to divorce from and so what we're going to do we're going to go right into the first one to start this conversation off once again we're glad to have you here this morning but number one the first myth that we want to identify number one is an affair inevitably destroys the marriage now we know for a fact that that is not true, that there is a, you know, a percentage of people who experience affairs in a relationship and anything beyond 1% to me is too high. Uh, but there is life after the affair. Many people who actually go through some type of healing process, some marital recovery, some personal transformation, oftentimes they realize that their relationship is better after the affair because the affair shines a light on a what was going on or wrong in the relationship and b what was going wrong inside the person and when you make course corrections and commit to being better doing different then you have the foundation for something that's long lasting mutually beneficial and sustainable mm, very good good point there um, I wanted to, I, I think I was going to add to something, but I lost my point. So we're going to go to the next one. <laughs> the next one. Monogamy is not norm in our society and most other societies. And that's interesting because we think about that this is a myth, right? That it's not the norm. So we talk about it in our little circles, how this is crazy and how could this happen? And we act as if we're shocked when there's an affair, when we know that affairs are historical. You know, there have been affairs taking place since the beginning of time. And so the fact about that is society gives lip service to monogamy, but actually supports affairs through role models, through advertisement, through TV, 
through the news and the media, literature and movies, everywhere you go, you can't get away from infidelity, can you? Yeah. Like all you see is it all over the mm -hmm. place. And so that, that becomes challenging for us when we are trying to, as couples, you know, do things the right way and have a monogamous relationship that we connect and support to, but everywhere we go and everything that we see is a symptom and a sign of infidelity. Yeah, it's just like every television show, every music song that you, like when you- The really songs. Listen, yeah, when you start listening to the lyrics and you're just like, oh man. And it's just like, you've been singing these songs and got the hook and singing the lyrics and then one day yeah. you realize, what That's exactly it. That's the thing. We don't really listen to the lyrics, do we? We actually listen to the beat and we're jamming. And sometimes I'm hearing my kids sing a song and I'm like, wait, what? Did you hear that? I think we pay more attention to the lyrics of the songs that our kids listen to than the ones that we listen Absolutely. to. But if you pay attention, you literally are dancing and tapping your foot to the beat of something that you don't even believe Absolutely. in. Absolutely. All right, let's go to the third one. Men initiate almost all affairs. Now, we know that that is not true. Uh, women are quickly on the rise. We're seeing, I mean, even in our, our sessions that it's about, I would say it's probably about a Hmm, 60, 40, 55, 35 split, something like mm -hmm. that. And it seems like women, uh, they're on the rise, you know, and we're doing different things for different reasons. But, you know, at the end of the day, infidelity is an equal opportunity issue that cuts, cuts across all gender lines, all educational levels, all sexual orientation, societal norms, economic status. You know, there's no particular person or, ca or, or category of a person that uh, is more prone to have an affair than others. It doesn't matter what your status is. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter even your marital satisfaction people do different things yeah. for different reasons and as a result we've got to be conscious of that because if we make the assumption oh that it's only men that do it then women may not guard themselves uh, right. uh, correctly and find themselves in situations that they're justifying and before you know it something goes from one area to another area to oh my god how did i get here mm -hmm. and how do i get back from that and so you have to have a healthy suspicion about your own ability uh, to work things out within yourself. Like, I, it's interesting because we were talking about restoring trust. And, uh, you know, sometimes people try to convince their spouse about what they will never do. I'll never do it again. And so I, I came across a video that said, well, well, actually, you should have a healthy suspicion about your ability to do it. Because if you have a healthy suspicion, then you'll put parameters around yourself and you'll protect you from yourself. But when you make the assumption, it'll never happen, it'll never be me, I'll never be in that situation. Sometimes people with the strongest moral convictions are the one that fall the hardest. That's absolutely true, so especially those that actually think that they are above <clears throat> reproach, right? They think it'll never happen to us. And to say that it's only men that uh, initiate affair is almost like saying only men have brokenness, right? Because that affair is just an, a, a symptom of other major issues that's going on. So that's like excluding women from that. So definitely that's a complete and total myth. So myth number four, an affair always means there are serious problems in the marriage. And I can't tell you how many people that I talk to that are completely blindsided by the affair of their spouse. They can't believe it. They thought everything was great. They were in love. They were having sex. They were going on vacation. They had the perfect life and still this affair took place. And so they were shocked by it. The fact is that infidelity is a choice and no one in no circumstance forces anyone to be unfaithful. It's an internal issue. It's a decision that you made, made again based on your brokenness and issues that you have left unresolved. And that's why we like going through this unearthing process to dig deeper. You know, when couples come to us, we're not just dealing with just the affair. I think that's what sets us apart. We go layers deeper to get to the why. And many people are asking all the time, why? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? A lot of times the offender, they don't know. They need support digging down to the root of the issue to find out why they would do it. Absolutely. And then once you begin to discover the why, it's just like the light bulb goes off because we've talked about it in the past. For some people, it's a cultural influence. It's it's what the society that they've been raised in has uh, caused them to believe is manhood or womanhood or how you deal with women, men and what a relationship looks like. Sometimes it's those family dynamics, which you saw growing up in your household. So if your dad did it to your mom, if your uncle did it to your aunt, if your brothers were involved, 
you just accepted that as the norm. So it's not a matter of right or wrong, it's just what it is. Uh, if you've gone through any type of trauma in your own life early on, uh, that can contribute to it. Um, if you've, I don't know, that we talk about the relational uh, developmental lag, how oftentimes you know, young people were robbed of their childhood. And so when they become biologically older, right, through age, they have a tendency to revert back to that childish, irresponsible space and they start doing things that are risky. So there's a number of reasons as to why we do what we do. And we've got to be fully conscious of that because if we are not, then we'll misdiagnose, point the finger at the wrong thing as the solution to the problem when really it's not the solution or it's not the problem at all. Right. There are other things that are causing those problems. Absolutely. I hope this is helping out. We're talking about the myths associated with an affair. And the reason why we want to unpack these myths is because many of us are holding on to belief systems and ideas and convictions that really don't serve us. And what happens is the way that we do life, the way that we operate in relationships is based upon a negative premise. So we're about to go to a break, but we want to hear from you. What are some of these myths that you've been carrying, things that you believe that are now, you know, up on the dock for discussion? Come back with your questions and your thoughts. We're going to speak to you when we get back after this break. We're back. You're watching the Couples Academy show. You just saw some of the events that are going to be taking place this particular month. We want you to sign up. Remember, Sex After Betrayal, that's March 27th. It is not too late. Uh, it's going to be four hours of just powerful information. So you need to attend with your partner. But if you are alone, that's okay, too, because you will get a copy of uh, the recording for you to watch with your partner later. So make sure you sign up. The link is in the description and we hope to see you there. Absolutely. So this this segment is about you guys. We want to hear from you. We're talking about myths today and facts about re infidelity and we want to know what do you think. So make sure you drop your comments in here. But first I want to acknowledge some folks. Good morning, Danielle from Ohio. Kia, good morning, my sister. Ronald from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Mary from Doho, Qatar. And all faith for Mars from California. Good morning, Torre. Good morning, Taisha from Alabama. We got South Carolina in here. Dee Dee's uh, from South Carolina. We got Sanaya from Virginia. The list goes on and on. I'm trying to find a place that we didn't have a guest from there before. I see Spartanburg, South Carolina. Hello, Jackie. Good morning, Dee Dee from South Carolina. Good morning, everybody. So I want to jump to some comments here. Uh, let's see what we got. I see them coming in and it's jumping a little bit faster than I can keep up. So a faithful Miss Jones says one year out from D-Day and I'm seeing growth in myself, but avoidant partner doesn't see or acknowledge it. Trying to heal the source triggers my spouse. I'm alone in healing something I didn't choose. Mm. Oh, that's tough. It is tough. You know, this is why check ins are important where you get an opportunity to debrief. Uh, even if it's on a weekly basis, hey, let's just that's why we talk about that work day. And sometimes it's just sitting down and having a conversation. You know, this is what I'm working on. Are you seeing any improvements in this space? Maybe he doesn't see it or she doesn't see it, whatever the situation is, uh, because a, a lot of times the change is it starts off internal and then it manifests externally. So um, maybe there's some things changing in terms of the way that you think and the way that you feel yeah. and the way that you respond. But it may not be so visibly evident and obvious to your partner. Mm. So bringing them into that conversation uh, and then bring them up to speed, they may begin to, oh, you know what, that's, you know, I did notice that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, I don't want you to just shut down the fact that he's just not, you know, he's ignoring me, what, what I'm going through. No, these conversations give clarity to what you're going through. And then plots a course for where your next steps should be. Absolutely. Kia says... 
Um, have to be careful of what influences you allow in your relationship, in, in, in your relationship, in all types of relationship for that matter. And I agree. I'll never forget years ago when I walked into a store with a friend who had stolen something before and I didn't know that. The person was just like, get out, get out. And then he looked at me and said, you get out too, guilty by association. And so that that was a really meaningful moment for me that it's what you associate yourself with. That's, That's so true. You become what you associate yourself with. And it's like, you're not even sometimes intending to, but you will suddenly start to see yourself behaving in certain ways, liking certain habits and things of that nature. So you gotta be so careful about what you bring into your world. Uh, Torre H says, almost six months since discovery, and my spouse says he is committed to making marriage work, but is still lying, omitting truths. How do I trust him to be honest moving forward? Yeah, well, you can't trust him to be honest moving forward if he's still lying and omitting truth. And I think it's important to have a conversation. Like, if he's lying and omitting truth, have a conversation and say, Joka, you said this, but here's the truth. Or you refuse to admit this, but here's the case. Let's get to the why of the lie, right? Because behind every lie is a why. Some people, uh, it's built into their personality. Some people lie out of fear and trepidation. Yeah. Some people lie because they don't want to continue to hurt and harm. So they figure, well, let me just give a false impression so it will make everything feel good. But they don't realize that they're doing more damage than good. <coughs> and so you, not only do you need to tell them that you need the truth, but you need to explain to them why you need to hear the truth. Because if the shoe were on the other foot, maybe they wouldn't want to know the truth. And mm -hmm. so they're not going to give it because they're wired not to want to receive it. But that's why it's important that the more you talk, the more clarifying your conversations are, then you're on a path to something that is helpful for you. And you know what? Moving forward is not just a decision, but there's a journey that takes place after that decision is made and constant course corrections are being made along the way. And that's why the both of you need individuals who are going to hold you accountable to make sure that you stay on track in your moving forward process. Absolutely. JG has a comment. Can being on a dating app while married be just for fun? That's the excuse I got. He the, I got he put time, effort, and enjoyed all those XXX pics. Well, it's certainly fun for him. <laughs> it's exactly. not fun for you. Right. It's fun for him. And I think that's where we go wrong because, you know, whatever deadness you felt in the relationship, whatever disconnect you felt, you decide you're going to go and find some enjoyment elsewhere and it leads you astray because you cannot help that euphoric feeling that develops with the newness of new relationships and new connections. I think it's probably part of how God has established us to come together. Together, that euphoric feeling that you feel in the beginning. If you don't have it in your relationship and you go outside, you're going to be led down that wrong path. And who knows if you have the, the strength to turn it off when it's going to go bad. Yeah. You don't know. Absolutely. I think that you have to establish ground rules, a relational code of ethics, a shared value system for what is appropriate and what is not. And you know, there's no space and there's no room for dating apps because it shows that there's an interest for somebody else. Right. Now that leads to a, a deeper conversation. So if you wanna say that that's just for, you know, kicks and giggles and I'm just having fun, well, let us redefine fun mm -hmm. and let us have a working a working operational definition for, for, for what fun means for us. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the principle. If it works for you and it doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for our marriage. Yeah. So we have to do what works for the marriage and protect it at all costs. And if it's if it's um, initiating more isolation, I mean, you know that it's bad, right? Because there's no way I'm on a dating app having somebody compliment me, tell me how beautiful I am and how wonderful I am, and I'm actually open and honest and sharing that with you. I can't do that with you next to me. That's something that I'm doing on my own in secret. Absolutely. So right off the bat, you know you're starting off wrong. The next comment here, let's go to Kia. She's saying people looking from the outside in want you to dis dismiss your spouse because they think they are horrible for you and want you to end the relationship based on the infidelity they don't want you to heal that's true and you know we get our families involved in our conversations sometimes we say way too much and you can't take back what you've said once you put it out there to your friends and your family they have created perceptions about your spouse that sometimes it's really really difficult for them to unbelieve right even though you want to go on even though you know that you're working on the details and this is why we tell y'all to choose 
choose very carefully who you speak to. Find a counselor to share this information with or set maybe one confidant that you know will not spread your business all around. But we can't go around blasting all of our private information to our family because they don't forget. That's, That's so problem. true. Yeah. The nature of their relationship with you is different, so they're kind of protective. They're kind of mm -hmm. looking out for you. So yeah, it's, it's and a they, touchy they situation. they have a harder time forgiving than you do. They certainly do, because they're not gonna go through the same process that you're gonna go through with your partner who's uh, been guilty of that particular act. Yeah. And so that's why you have to be careful who you talk to. And then when you go through that recovery process, you gotta let them know, hey, we're doing much better. And these, these are the reasons why. So that's a part of the whole process, folks. Listen, we got one more segment coming up. You're watching the Couples Academy Show. Stay with us. We got more to get to. Be right back. Hey guys, we're back. All right, we want to hit these comments. I have a comment from Marsha that says, Marsha Binger from Jamaica West Indies. Uh, what can be done to help a child who had been caught up in parents' affair? Don't know the specifics of that, but you know, you all we talk about this all the time. You want to protect your children from your marriage, protect your children from an affair. Uh, be really careful not to put your marriage or your life on front street or you yeah. know because once they see things they can't unsee once they know things they can't unknow so just as a couple would go through some type of marital counseling you know we had a couple who reached out to us um, a couple of days ago saying do you do family counseling because my child has seen too much uh, my child has been impacted by what's happening between my spouse and i you know can you offer some relief and so having a special attention given to your child and having them go through a counseling process is just as important because they're a part of that marriage because they live in that home they're going to be influenced and affected by what you two do and so if they've been exposed to things give them the attention that they need for their healing as well absolutely noreen says possible myth if you don't feel any love for your spouse right now it's over there is no more point in trying is holding on to just the loyalty of your vows enough i'm gonna say it's enough for you to hold on and fight long enough to see if something can come out of it mm -hmm. um, because i think relationships do get to the point where there's nothing left you feel nothing completely dead and numb to everything that's that apathy that's the wall that builds up so that you can function and our bodies and our minds have a, a, an ability to do that we can still operate within the relationship cooking cleaning connecting with our spouse and doing all these things physically right but mentally and emotionally be gone but that loyalty and that commitment to see it through can be just what you need to get yourself to some counseling to find out if there's anything worth fighting for in this relationship i would say yes yeah that's right because i people i asked this question on time i said listen um, think about a video game. You know how in a video game, you know, you got that joystick and you see up top the energy that you have left. Maybe you're fighting or it's a war game. And every time you get hit, you lose a little bit more energy. You get hit again, you yeah. lose a little bit more energy. And you're at that little, the battery pack is low. I say, listen, in terms of your relationship, I said, out of 100%, what percentage of you uh, is there within you uh, that has a willingness to fight through this? And sometimes I hear, well, 10%. And I'll be like, you know what? Great, because that's all I need. I'll take that 10% and we'll work that 10% and get it from 10 to 15, 15 to 20. You know, if there's something there to hold on to, that is really all you need. And so once you understand the pathway to your recovery, it can go right back up to 100% because things are starting to shift and change in that relationship. And so if all you have is your vows, I'll take that all day long. Just like some people say, I'm only in this for the kids. I'll take that too. I'm only in this because I'm financially obligated. Well, 
well, I'll take that too. Because at least it's a starting block to work with mm -hmm. to take things to the next level. Okay, we got another comment here. Tracy says, my husband went snowboarding with a woman co-worker only two months after finding out about the affair. He said they are only friends and did nothing wrong. What can I say to make him understand how he crushed my hope he was sorry for the initial affair in the first place hmm what can i say to make him understand the thing is is that he's still lying he's still sneaking he's still doing things behind your back i mean you just discovered the affair and now he goes and sneaks off and does a snow trip with a woman and says there's nothing wrong he did nothing wrong the first thing he did wrong was he was telling keeping secrets i think that's another myth right we think that infidelity just means i had sex with someone the root of infidelity is secrecy and at the end of the day i don't think that it even matters what you say to him at this point because he's doing what he wants to do it's about you deciding what you want for you and sit, putting some boundaries and some ultimatums in place and, and making those things aware to him because if it's okay with you that he continues to go out and do these things then he's gonna keep doing it but when you put your foot down about something if you want to fight for this marriage you say we're going to go to counseling and if not then that then he might start to listen yeah you've got to become uncompromising in your approach and a lot of times we're waiting on the affair partner to get him or herself together. Well, I'm waiting for them to change and I'm waiting for them to do right. Meanwhile, you're in a weakened state, possibly because of the affair, but maybe something about your personality that makes your partner feel like, you know what, I can do this and get away with it and there's not gonna be no consequences and it is what it is. And I'll tell her it was just this or it was just that and she'll believe it anyway. And so that's why you have to focus on becoming stronger. And you know, if you can't figure out the right thing to do because you're emotionally involved, you need someone who is emotionally detached from your situation that you value, that you trust, that you will listen to so that you can make some changes to protect the uh, marriage from it ever happening again. And if so, what are the consequences? Like at the end of the day, when there's repeat behavior again and again and again and again and again, you've got to figure out what needs to be done to keep these behaviors from being repeated. Otherwise, you're signing up for more of the same. And doing more of the same will just get you more of the same. Okay. I think we should jump back into these questions here. Were we, which one were we on for? Yes, we were on number five. Um, <laughs> Number five, myth. Infidelity is a sign that sex is missing or unsatisfactory at home. And we know that that's not the truth because um, many people have reported having access to sexual intimacy whenever they want and that it's great. But there's something about it just not being enough. Maybe there are people who just say there was opportunity, so I pursue it. So it's not about something missing. We call this the marital void. So because this was missing, I had to go out and get. Because she wouldn't do this, I had to go out and find. Because he didn't show up in this space, I had to go out and do. And, and, and really, it, overwhelmingly, that is not the case. And even if that is the case, that's not a justification to cheat. That's a justification to have a conversation and figure out what needs to be brought into the relationship yeah. to prevent you from stepping out. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to the next one. It says number six. Uh, People generally thank seek you. an affair. <laughs> I couldn't find it. People generally <laughs> seek um, in an affair what they do not get at home from their spouse. Yeah, it's kind of similar to that. It part. is. It's kind of similar, but there's some cool statistics that I pulled based on this. So contrary to what people believe, I mean, you can be in a very happy marriage and still commit have an affair. So research research shows that 50 56 percent of men and 34 percent of women who are involved in an affair reported that their marriages were happy. Isn't that interesting? And and generally, affairs that take place early in the marriage are more highly correlated with dissatisfaction than those that take place later on in the marriage. So it sounds like if you're having an affair at the beginning of your relationship, that's more because of maybe disappointment and dissatisfaction. But those relationships that have some years behind them, most of the time they are happy, but they are bored and they didn't know how to become explorers to fix what was missing in their marriage. Yeah. So they want to keep the spouse, keep the relationship, and they want to step out and have a little fun on the outside. Yeah. And that's a problem, folks. That's why you have to be uh, in an exploration type of phase of your relationship. If you don't know what that is, please ask us about it. Then the last, um, the last myth, internet sex and internet infidelity are not considered extramarital affairs. 
Let me tell you something. Overwhelmingly, most affairs do not start in the bedroom. They end in the bedroom, but there is a start to them. And oftentimes, the start of an affair seems innocent, seems platonic, seems like it's no big deal, and that, that becomes the slippery slope. So whether I'm just talking to a colleague at work, whether I'm just talking to someone at the water cooler at the gym, it's not like we're talking about anything inappropriate. We're just talking about working out. You know, just because I go online and I'm connecting with people, I mean, that's what social media is. I can socially connect with people around the world, especially during this pandemic. I feel isolated. What's wrong with that? I'm not connected to my spouse. It's just conversation. It's just online. But we know that statistically, when emotions are involved in these type of online connections within 30 days, they go from online to offline. And then soon after that, they go from offline to in the sack, in the bed. Mm. They become sexual and inappropriate. And so these are the things that we have to be mindful of. Let's not minimize what it is that we're doing. Let's not create a false definition for what an affair is. An affair is anything that you are doing that you do not want your spouse to know about when your energy, sexual energy, emotional energy, and social energy is mental going energy. in any, mental energy, going in any other direction other than the one between you and your spouse that is an indication that that is a betrayal, that it's an affair, that it's infidelity. I don't care what you want to call it. Infidelity, cheating, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all a betrayal. And what you want to do is prevent your relationships from going into those spaces so that you can have the best relationship that you can have. Listen, guys, hope you enjoyed today's show. Great information. Thanks for your comments. Make sure you sign up for that Sex After Betrayal Masterclass. We also have The Last Chance Weekend coming up, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. We have more room for you. We just want you to do for you what needs to be done to take your life and your relationship to a higher level so that we can all celebrate together. Listen, guys, love you. You're watching the Couples Academy Show. See you on tomorrow. If you would like to be a guest on our show or if you're interested in one of our restoration programs, contact us today at couplesacademy.org.